These are the newly rebranded uh, Stog knives. These, this is the Aegis, and this is the uh, Flash. Now the Flash and the Aegis are very, very uh, emblematic Sog designs. They've been around a long time, and uh, they ended up going the cheese route, you know, for a, uh, for a while there. Uh, Sog started really overbranding their knives and, and kind of went for cheaper builds and flashier looks and uh, much wider spread distribution, being at every Dick's Sporting Goods and every Home Depot uh, and every Walmart out there. And, um, well, I guess they had a change of heart over the last couple of years and they decided it's time to uh, maybe go back to what the original mission of SOG knives was. Now, I'm going to say SOG is... Um, interchangeable with SOG, and now they really want to be called the Studies and Observations Group, uh, which is what SOG is named after, a, a, a famous reconnaissance group, I guess it was, uh, in the Army during, uh, before Vietnam. Studies and Observations Group. So this is the Aegis, or Aegis AT. AT stands for Assisted Technology. Uh, so, as you may expect, these, uh, like their older iterations, are automatics. I'm sorry, not automatics, um, assisted knives. They are really heavily assisted. I mean, you just gently, barely nudge it, and it, uh, it flies open. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, this is the first time I've actually been excited about an assisted knife in, oh, a long, long time. So as you can see, what they did with the with the Aegis here is they, they kept the same profile. If you look at it all the way around, the silhouette is pretty much the same, um, with the exception of this uh, lanyard loop here. I believe this is an addition. Um, and this lock. We'll talk about the lock in a minute. Uh, so yeah, they've, they've kept the contours or the silhouette and the profile of the knife, but have changed everything on the inside. Uh, if you will, uh, they've changed the blade. It is now D2, uh, cryo-treated D2. Not exactly sure what the cryo cryogenics does, but I guess it makes it better. And D2 is a much better blade steel than the Aus 8 they had been using. Um, it's a nice thin blade steel as well, and a nice full flat ground blade. Looks kind of like a kitchen blade to me. And uh, this one I have used, this one I have not. This is Jim's, I'm gonna send this to him when I'm done making the video. But uh, do you think they were successful? Do you think these rebrands are uh, breathing new life into the, into the legacy SOG designs? Um, I think they do. I think these are the most desirable SOGs I've seen in our SOG or Studies and Observation Group's knives that I've seen in years. And uh, I gotta say, that assisted is pretty sweet. Um, so let's take a look at this. The action is excellent on this knife and on this knife. This pops open uh, really nicely too. And uh, not for nothing, I think they took the uh, the flash and, and really turned it into a handsome knife. I love that blade profile. I would love it even better. Uh, without the serrations, that clean look. I love the uh, the large sharpening choils there and the, and the plunge grinds. Um, uh, this one is ground a little thicker. It's a slightly thicker uh, stock, and it's saber ground, so uh, so it's it's flat ground, but only up to about here. So it's a little bit more of a stout knife. Now, part of this rebranding is siloing users and and siloing is usually a, a dirty word but really what they're trying to do is design their knives for either uh, everyday carry use that's what this one it falls in that category for outdoors use that's what this one falls into and then up here you would see the um the seal xr or the uh um, the trident series those are tactical so tactical outdoors edc and uh, I think part of that, in, in adding color to the situation, all of their old knives uh, were gray and silver and black, you know, just, just uh, bead blasted, you know, cheap steel and, and kind of plasticky handles and sog written all over the place. Well, taking this, the successful shape of the knife, for instance, this one, and changing the, the material to this nice green FRN, and then adding a pop of color, uh, A for 
just pure the pure joy of it but also be you drop it in the woods you can see fluorescent yellow um, I, I think the recoloration is a is a great success I think they've taken the uh, a, a stale brand and kind of pepped it up a little bit right this is a lot less threatening looking than say uh, a silver and black knife because uh, it's blue it's happy it's that uh, it's that uh, egg egg blue color you know so it's uh you know what can you do with that possibly you can carry it you can edc it you can do a lot of good work with it but uh, it's not very threatening is what i'm getting at uh the frn is very nice it's it feels more dense i don't know if that's uh true but it feels more dense than frn that was on their older uh, models that felt thin and plasticky and almost breakable uh this is this is feels like very dense um, FRN feels great in the hand and uh, yeah so I think they did a good job with the material choice D2 definite upgrade uh, the um, the handles definite upgrade uh, the action feels so strong that it, I would call it a definite upgrade if you're gonna make it an assisted you want it to feel like a switchblade you want it to hammer out hard and um, yeah so I, I think they did a great job with that I think these blades are very useful though I haven't like I said, I haven't used this one because so I don't want to. I don't want to jack it up any more than I already have before I send it to Jim. Uh, but this one I have used outside quite a bit. Uh, I talk frequently about all the vines around here. That's one of my little obsessive things: is going around and cutting vines before they swallow my house. Uh, this has been great at that. It's so thin and slicey; it just makes quick work of that. But also, I've used it to do feather sticks for the fire pit out back. Yes, it's a suburban fire pit, uh, but I still like to try and light the fire in a, you know, how would nothing fancy do it, you know? So I make a fire stick and I try and, I try a feather stick and I try and light the fire that way. This does very well at making those kind of shavings, those kind of real fine wood shavings. And uh, also, um, it's great at sharpening pencils. And I know that might be a kind of a laughable task, but that's something I use my knives for like a lot and a nice thin slicey blade like this full flat ground on thin stock is perfect for that this is turning out to be a great knife I have used it in the kitchen uh, when I first got it I wanted to test it with cheese and butter and that kind of thing and really works great kind of slices very nicely and then uh, the, depending on how thinly you slice it the material yawns away nicely from the old uh, full flat grind um, this was also great for um, cutting uh, cucumbers. My daughters like those little Israeli cucumbers, the little ones, and we, I cut them up with this. Great little kitcheny knife. Not that I'm into using my folding knives uh, in the kitchen that much, but uh, I wanted to see how that would work. Now, this is one of the few knives that I look at and that uh, handle to blade ratio doesn't bother me. Um, now, handle to blade ratio is a superficial thing. It's a looks thing. It's a balance thing. I think our human eyes are always looking for balance. And that includes on knives, uh, pocket knives, you know. Uh, some knives like this one have a great handle to, to, to blade ratio just because of how it's built and where the pivot is placed and what its use is and all that kind of thing. Uh, to me, this, this is a three inch blade. Here, let me bring in some comparisons. This is a three inch blade with a with a nearly five inch handle and here is it. it's slightly over i guess it's three and a quarter or three and an eighth inch but it really gives you a lot of handle to hold on to so much so that this is not an issue for my medium hands and probably not for your large hands either um and now i know what you're looking at it's the uh, elephant in the room and it's this lock sitting up there on the spine in a seemingly uh, inconvenient hotspot. But, and, and by the way, it only works to lock the knife closed. It does not, you cannot use it when the knife is open. It doesn't, it's not an extra lock for this XR lock, which is a take on the axis lock or bar lock as people like to call it. Uh, so this does not affect at all. So here, if I, if I hold the blade like this and I'm powering through material, I'm not feeling it. If I'm here in like a saber grip, it's a nice sort of reverse thumb uh, 
uh, thumb ramp, sort of acting like a sub hilt on a fighting knife would. That protrudes here to help you extract it if you have to thrust it into something. Um, the one time I have found that I feel this at all is when it's a full on tight grip, hammer grip like this, really tight and doing this for a while, then you start to feel it. Then I start to detect it, but I don't necessarily feel it uh, in such a way that it's horrible. And with gloves, it would be undetectable, I believe. Um, pocket clip, loop over, deep carry, great in concept, but it leaves very little, very little material, or very little room for thick pants uh, pockets. What do you call it? Thick seamed pockets. And if this is an outdoors knife, you expect that someone wearing, you know, maybe a, a Carhartt coverall in the winter or whatever might want to have this in their pocket. But this is prohibitive. Uh, first of all, this loop over is not very large and accommodating. And then you got those giant domed screws there, two of them. And really, like, in my beater khakis that with pockets that are thin, excuse me, thin and all torn up, that still presents a problem. So this is something I think they need to they need to tweak. And that's a that's a nothing tweak. Because even if you made this a little bit wider and that shortened the how far the clip extended by an eighth of an inch, it wouldn't matter. You could use the same clip, same material, just bend it differently and um, so maybe that's something they'll do. At some point, I'm sure they'll hear enough of that, like people saying, eh, you need a little, like, good idea, but you need a little more space. Now over here on the flash, they don't have that issue at all. Actually, the flash rides, uh, I would say a little bit better, um, even though I don't like to go that deep on my pocket clip. I mean, that's deep, but uh, it definitely accommodates larger pants better because there are no screws. All right, let me put in some, uh, Size comparisons, we have, that's the Rat 2. Let's see, oh, here's one that a lot of people have. Kershaw Leak. Uh, here's one that a lot of reviewers assume a lot of people have. That's the uh, Paramilitary 2. And then also they have, uh, I'll also compare it to another one of their new-ish knives, the SOG XR. This is a great little pocket knife. I got this for our, uh, the Knife Junkie donation to um, Knife Rights for Ultimate Steel. It's a great little knife. I like that a lot, though I'm not gonna use it much because I, I don't wanna mess up the, uh, the insignia there. So, yeah, one more. Another knife that's kind of in the same realm in terms of price is the excellent Kershaw knockout or uh, bare knuckle. So, what do I think of these SOGs? I think they're pretty awesome. I think they are great um, user EDCs. I think you could carry either one of these all the time. Of course, I would, I would do something about this if it became an issue for me, but. I like the studies and observation group's concept of, of designing for three different purposes. Uh, but I think that you can carry all of these across purpose naturally. If I had the saw, if I had the trident, that would be the one I carry the most because I like big black tactical knives. So, uh, but they have classed that up too by, by putting a little red, um, accents on on that but they've kept kept the same emblematic designs of that with the big cutout so you can cut seat belts theoretically th through the slash there or through the cutout and uh yeah so so the trident the flash and the aegis have all remained and have all been worked over and i believe that they have really gone to great lengths to improve the the uh not only the knives but i think they're also improving the brand image uh because I think knife makers or knife uh, consumers and collectors are starting to see that SOG wants to appeal to them as well. It's not just how many knives they can sell at Walmart, but how many different kind of people can we bring into uh, using knives and how many of these uh, 
already uh, existing knife aficionados can we can we tempt with our new offerings and i think they're doing a great job and i i can't wait to see what else uh, comes out from them i uh for myself i can't wait to get my hands on the seal xr it's their big uh folding tactical really cool knife that came out last year uh, so anyway, SOG, coming back and doing great things. And I look forward to see what happens in the future. But these, I can recommend. For 60 bucks or so, these are great knives. All right, everybody. Thanks for watching.